person that I've done, especially. All right, so, we'll carry on. You're, you're live, so off, yeah. over to you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to attend this webinar. Uh, wet areas and drains, recommended detailing for safety sheet vinyl flooring. We feel the correct detailing is often overlooked and in some cases the correct drains are not specified. Some people know that the recommended details are, however, to save a nickel now, they will choose to ignore the recommended adhesives, methods of installation, and later will have to pay a quarter for that nickel they save. We also like to set people up for success because it's a win-win for everyone involved and that's why we do these. This photo is an example of a non-clamping style drain failing. All too often, this is a very common problem when the detailing is done incorrectly and can be avoided with proper training and education. Just cutting and fitting around the drain while hoping it does not fail is not good enough. Let's do it right the first time because no one can afford to do it twice and it makes everyone involved look bad. Let's face it, one bad job can get you 10 bad references and 10 good jobs can get you at least one good reference. Now in this photo, you can see the components of a surface membrane clamping style drain. Starting from the bottom up, you'll see the drain body, then the adjustable drain mechanism the non-slip safety sheet vinyl clamped into the drain body with the clamping collar, then the strainer grate is cover is screwed into the clamping collar, thus creating a watertight installation. This is always the plan A preferred method of installation. The correct surface membrane clamping style drain was specified. However, the flooring installer had cut around the strainer grate and then realizing their mistake, they thought it was a good idea to put a square patch in a brand new installation and clamp it into the drain body. This is a good example of why we do these presentations to specifiers, business owners, project managers, and installers. It's explanation, demonstration, participation, and education. Oh yeah, the end user rejected this patchy workmanship and the whole sheet needed to be removed and after much scraping and floor prep, a new sheet was installed the right way. In this photo is a surface membrane clamping drain body to which the sheet vinyl would be adhered to with two part polyurethane adhesive. With a hot air gun softly warming up the flooring and then make a small round cutout and weigh the flooring down into the drain body using a sandbag overnight. Some installers might be tempted to use a bag of floor patch or similar because it's handy, but you can run the risk of a densely packed bag not fully conforming to the drain body and have problems the next day when you come back. Now in this photo of the same mock-up, you can see the sandbag has been removed and the clamping collars screwing over the non-slip sheet vinyl into the drain body. If you try and install the clamping collar the same day of the installation and tighten down the screws, you will create a pucker around the clamping collar. So when you go back to the neck, when you go back the next morning and look, you'll most likely see or find a raised edge, maybe even puckered, and it cannot be fixed after the two-part polyurethane has hardened. So please wait until the next day remove the sandbag and install the clamping collar and a strainer grate. In this last mock-up photo, you can now see the strainer cover attached to the clamping collar, completing the watertight finish. You can see the flooring is rippled because of the contour of it going into the drain body. And that's why two-part polyurethane adhesive is always recommended then weighed down overnight in these locations. This is also incorrect in wet environments. The surface membrane clamping style cleanouts available should be used for watertight installations. And these could have been modified as you will see 
coming up in the next few slides. And this photo shows a standard non-clamping drain body and strainer cover before being modified. This is what we call plan B, it is not preferred, however, is better than just cutting around the drains or cleanouts. The strainer grate can be modified using a bench grinder by back beveling the outer edge of the strainer grate approximately 30 degree angle while being careful not to create a razor sharp edge that could cut into the non-slip sheet vinyl or worse if this is in a shower people could injure themselves on sharp edges moisture resistant floor patch should be used to make the drain body flush with the substrate The installer must pay careful attention cutting around the screw holes the following day. If they cut too far past these locations, the cut will not be covered by the strainer grate and has potential to fail while letting water and contaminants ingress underneath the non-slip sheet vinyl, thus compromising the installation. A good tip for this is to place a piece of masking tape over the screw holes and make a line with the Sharpie so it will be easier for the installer to locate the screw holes the next day. It will also prevent adhesive from getting into the screw holes during the application of adhesive. Completed modified drain with the flooring. So you can see the sheet vinyl is kind of slipped in behind there. Um, much better than just cutting around it, but again, it's still plan B. All right, clamping trench and square drains. Surface membrane clamping style drains are also available in different shapes and sizes. We would be more than happy to help with drain selection for your next project. Correct clamping trench drain in dressing room showers. The installation has white rock on the walls and the wall panels are overlapping the integral coving, which creates a roof shingle effect, letting the water shed down and into the drains and having adequate slope to drain is very important, as you can see in this photo from right to left. Grease traps and detailing around them. These drawings show gully angle and gully edge for a solution when the surface membrane clamping drain cannot be used. A saw cut one inch deep and three thirty seconds of an inch wide will need to be done to receive the gully. The saw cut must be dry and dust free. We recommend dry fitting the gully and then filling the saw cut with epoxy. Place the gully into the saw cut and remove all excess adhesive while the is still wet using isopropyl and a clean cloth. If the substrate is uneven, it may be necessary to weigh down the gully until the epoxy has set up and then fit the flooring to the gully. The following day, heat weld all seams, miters, and the non-slip sheet vinyl flooring together so it is all one. The water and contaminants would have to travel underneath both sides of the embedded gully before it has any chance of compromising the installation. That's why this is a good solution when you can't have a comp clamping drain. And here you can see a good intentions but poor execution, miscuts, not heat welded to the flooring or the miters. The grate will not be easily removed for servicing and this is not considered a watertight detail. And you can clearly see how important it is to get the detailing right the first time. This is just plain nasty in a kitchen where food is prepared. This is a photo of the new installation using the gully angle to prevent grease and other contaminants from ingress under the safety flooring. This will last for many, many years now. Correct detailing in a commercial kitchen here you can see the grease trap from the last photos, a round surface membrane clamping drain and a rectangular clamping drain. 
This will last for many years also, which is very important because the cost of shutting down one of these kitchens can be in tens of thousands of dollars a day in lost revenue. Or in this case, they had to hire third party catering for a week as this is a long-term care facility and they need to continue with the food operations. John, we were just involved in a, um, in a similar type commercial kitchen uh, failure because the sheet had been put in wrong and it just can't be overstated enough to, to have the right mechanics on site. It was six weeks trying to get the uh, commercial kitchen ripped out and replaced with new flooring. And by the time the whole thing was done, $250,000 for around a 1600 square foot space in, in compensation and corrective costs. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is so expensive, Chris, um, from kitchen equipment to shutdown to removal to any remediation or if there's moisture problems, um, the list goes on and on. So last thing you want to do is shut down a kitchen. Um, I mean, if you do... It was interesting. If you do the math, it was they had to then contract out a catering service, three hot meals a day to 600 um, residents yeah. at 20, 20 bucks a meal. Um, yeah, it's not cheap. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Carry on. That's OK. But that's again, that's a good point. And that's why we want to make sure that everyone's set up for success here. Um, we don't want failures because that makes everybody look bad. We want the end user to the contractor, um, to the manufacturer to look good in these cases. And that way we get more work and everybody's happy and we move on. Yeah. Gully angle budding trench grates. The gully angle is used next to the non-slip sheet vinyl around two swimming pools at this facility with great success. So on one side you have mosaic tiles you can see that go into the pool. Then you have the trench drain that goes linear around both pools. Um, the gully angle is put in adjacent next to the grate so they can be removed and serviced as needed. It's not covering them. Um, it's all heat welded together and it's a watertight installation. So, and so John, the, the resilient is used here and not more tile because why? Because you have a non slip factor, Chris. And, and this particular product is good either under barefoot or if you're wearing shoes. So it's very practical in wet environments, shower, swimming pools, et cetera. So resilient product brings uh, an added slip resistance to it that maybe tile cannot. Correct. And it's a lot easier to maintain than tile would be for say with, with grout and things like that involved. Exactly, yeah, okay. Yeah. Incorrect detailing around square floor drain. This is absolutely not the way to detail around the square floor drain. There's only a short matter of time before this fails in the commercial kitchen. Shutting the commercial down is very costly as we just talked about. So these installers <clears throat> just cut around the outside of the grate and not very straight or anything about it. Um, they didn't even caulk the edges of it at the bare minimum, which still would fail. Um, this was really bad, um, really so bad. In, so if the installer walks into a non-clamping situation where he can't terminate the deal prop uh, the detail properly what does he do like he he's not the he's not the mechanical trade replacing the drains and some of the you know like what you're do you correct say? so that's another solution where the gully angle or gully edge comes in very handily you can even do it retrofit if this is already installed you can still put a saw cut in and insert the gully angle or gully edge, depending on what you're coming up against or over top of. So in the next photo, that's the correct dealing, detailing around a square floor drain. So, 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 so that could have been retrofitted without tearing out or jackhammering out the concrete to get at the drain mechanism. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit more tedious and, and um, labor intensive than it would be the first time around with just overcutting the sockets here you'd have to get close to the edge and maybe um, taking a masonry bit use it just drill in that three thirty seconds of an inch wide because you don't want to overcut with the saw blade in this scenario but it could be done and in retrofit instead of jackhammering and ripping everything out okay. just take more time after the fact right so this is something the installer could take care of absolutely and you know it's, it's sad because a lot of people don't want to take the time to do these details right because they're probably not getting paid for it. So it's understanding and explaining to the end user or the contractor 
why it's necessary to take the extra steps, why it's necessary to spend a little bit more money to save again. Like I said, if you're saving a nickel now and you're paying a quarter later to fix something that fails, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah and a lot of these, the cleaning fluids that are used are designed to penetrate deep to, to get all the dirt out. And so it's, it's worst case scenario. If that cleaning fluid gets under the resilient, it's so destructive. It is, you know, in cleaning agents, which is also another whole nother session. But if they're high pH content and they get underneath there, where they can attack the plasticizers there in the sheet vinyl, and that makes the sheet vinyl brittle um, and prematurely um, shortens the lifespan and just attacks the sheet vinyl really bad. So that's why it's really important to create watertight seal. It's not just from water. It's like you said, Chris, it's cleaning agents, it's different contaminants that can attack from the underside and shorten the lifespan of the sheet vinyl. And I'm sure the adhesive doesn't fare too well either. No, and even if it's an epoxy or it's a two-part polyurethane, it's only going to last so long being attacked like that. It is better than water-based, but eventually it breaks down too. Yeah. <clears throat> Using the proper mastic sealants. Uh, the last thing is to make sure that you use the correct manufacturer's mastic to seal around all penetrations, abutments, and exposed edges, such as door frames or walls that have not been flash coated. This will stop any ingress of water or contaminants from compromising the installation. Please don't use your local hardware store $2 tube of silicone. <clears throat> this is asking for trouble. We know our mastics stick to our floors and cleaning technologies. So John, Ultra provide not only the adhesives, the sheet flooring, but also the, um, the silicon recommended to be used? Yeah, we have a polymer mastic. It's an ultra mastic and it's color matched to our products um, or a translucent. <clears throat> and we know it sticks really well. You can use it in coolers, um, different temperature ranges fine with our products. I know that it's, it's proprietary. It's made by a resin department in the United Kingdom in London where our headquarters is. It's not, a, it's not a tub and tile, $2 or $5, whatever it is. <clears throat> but we know that it, we know that it works. Sorry, not, not a quick stop at Home Depot to fix, uh, no. <laughs> to keep yourself moving forward. Again, it's, you know, it's, people want to nickel and dime things, you're going to end up with nickel and dime results, so. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, looks fine to me. Don't let this guy be doing your work for you. <laughs> All right. Well, any 